This is the bone fibula. The slender fibula lies posterolateral to the tibia and is firmly attached to it by tibiofibular syndesmosis which includes the introsious membrane. The fibula has no function in weight bearing. It serves mainly for muscle attachment, providing distal attachment for one muscle and proximal attachment for eight muscles. Now here the bone fibula is holding in, in its anatomical position. It is held vertically. The upper end or the proximal end is slightly expanded in all directions. The lower end or the lateral malleolus is expanded anteroposteriorly and is flattened from side to side. Now we will be looking at some of its general features, its site determination and some of its major attachments. So we will begin with the, the proximal end, then we have shaft and then we have the low end. So firstly let's look at the features of the upper end. This is expanded in all directions, here we can see here. And the superior surface bears a circular articular facet which articulates with the little condyle of the tibia. The apex, this here, is this styloid process which projects upward from its posterior lateral aspect. The constriction immediately below the head is known as the neck of the fibula. Now let's move on the shaft. Now you can see here that the shaft is very irregular or curved shaped. Now to identify the anterior surface we will look its distal part. We will need to locate a triangular shape structure on its lateral from its lateral malleolus. We will find it somewhere here. This triangular shaped structure will continue into the anterior border. So the sharp border is the anterior border. Now to find its medial border just adjacent to the anterior border we have the medial border. Between anterior and the medial border we have a very less space here. So this is the medial border here and this is also known as introsious border because the introsious membrane will be attached on to this. Then we have this depression and then we have this crest. This is known as the medial crest. You could locate it here. This is the medial border. Then we have the medial crest. This sharp border is the medial crest. Then we'll have the posterior border. This is the posterior. This is the blunt of all. You can feel it blunt of all other borders. And this is the posterior border. Now, this, these three borders divided into three different surfaces. Anterior surface we have. We have the medial surface and the posterior surface. And now coming to the lower end. This is the lower end which is which will forming the this part will be forming the lateral malleolus. So we have a malleolar fossa here and this triangular shaped facet. This part have basically four surfaces. The anterior surface which is rough this part. This whole part is rough one, and this is known as the anterior surface. Then the posterior surface is marked by a groove. So into this groove we can locate here. This is known as the posterior surface. Then we have the lateral or the subcutaneous surface. This part is the lateral or the subcutaneous. Yes. Then we have medial surface which is a, which have a triangular facet. This is the triangular facet that will, be, that will be attaching to the talus anteriorly and malleolar fossa posteriorly. Now let's talk of its side determination. For side determination it's quite challenging for some people to identify the side of it but it's quite simple that you need to identify the malleolar fossa. Just look for malleolar fossa first. So here we have the medullar fossa. We need to put our thumb in that and hold the whole of the bone 
with the index finger so what we need to do is here we'll place our thumb in the medulla fossa and we'll try holding the whole of the bone around its lateral malleolus by our index finger something like this and we can now i'm holding it with my left hand so this is the bone of left leg but if i tried holding with the right thumb i'll be holding it i'll be just trying to place here but it will be again covering the articular facet but if i'll hold with the left it is very easily placed in this depression here just if you analyze how to hold up the fibula through the medullary fossa now after doing its uh, some of the features and side determination now look at now we'll look at its attachment we'll begin with the medial surface so here is the medial surface now the extensor digitorum longus form whole of the upper one fourth and and form anterior half of the middle two third extensor digitorum longus the extensor hallucis longus and the pernicious tertius from the one fourth the end one fourth it gives proximal attachment to these three muscles then on its lateral surface moving on to its lateral surface it will give origin to pernicious longus from its upper one third then pernicious brevis from anterior half of its middle one third now we'll look at its its posterior border on its posterior border it gives proximal attachment it gives attachment to the soleus from one upper one fourth part and lower three fourth part it gives origin to flexor hallucis longus the part of the posterior surface between the medial crest and the interosseous border the groot part gives origin to tibialis posterior now we'll look at its attachment of biceps femoris now from the, at the head of the fibula actually the styloid process is uh, slightly broken up here the head of the fibula is that it receives the insertion of the biceps femoris on the anterolateral slope somewhere here this this is the anterolateral slope of the apex it will receive its insertion here and the other insertion we also receive the insertion of biceps femoris on the posterior aspect as well so we will receive the insertion of biceps femoris on its posterior aspect also so the origin uh, the insertion of biceps femoris is c shaped on its anterolateral aspect and between this there is attachment of fibular collateral ligament and now the capsular ligament of the superior tibio fibular joint is attached around this uh, facet around this articular facet now we will be looking at its anterior border of the fibula this gives attachment this anterior border gives attachment to the anterior intermuscular septum of the leg and in the lower part in this anterior this triangular region anteriorly it gives attachment to superior extensor retinaculum in the lower part of the posterior margin of the triangular area it gives attachment to superior peroneal retinaculum the posterior border the posterior border this one this gives attachment to posterior intermuscular septum the interosseous border or the medial border this one this uh, medial border this gives attachment to interosseous membrane so anteriorly it gives attachment to anterotelofibular ligament then we have inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament and this is which is above here and posterior telofibular ligament which is just below the medulla fossa